On page 39 is the first ECG exercise. And um, the only thing you need to look for uh, in my workbook for now is uh, either evidence of acute myocardial infarction, um, hypertrophy, or uh, a normal cardiogram, or bundle branch blocks, because that's really what the focus of this workbook is on. So um, I would recommend pausing this at any time or uh, just looking at your workbook and doing the interpretation. Go back through the pages in your workbook and look at the different criteria uh, and then interpret this ECG. Um, or as I say, pause this exercise at any point down at the bottom of the screen here and um, just have a look at it and see what you think. Um, again, just keep in mind it's important to look at the ECGs in terms of groupings, uh, leads that are anatomically contiguous. So you'll recall that leads 2, 3, and AVF are anatomically contiguous. They represent the inferior wall of the left ventricle, which is fed by the RCA in uh, the, um, most humans. Then we look at the anterior leads starting from V1 right through V4. And uh, we'll go through these uh, in detail in just a second. So V1 through V4, V1 and V2 being the septal leads, V3 and V4 being the anterior leads. And then lastly, we look at the lateral leads, which are V5 and V6, low, which are low lateral, and uh, 1 and AVL, which are high lateral. All right. So at this point, if you want to pause it, just go through it on your own. That's great. Otherwise, I'm just going to carry on and assume that you've gone through the workbook and have done the analysis yourself. So let's start with the inferior leads. Always start from left to right and go through this uh, rather than just jumping in at, at recognizing patterns. So if we look at ST, uh, sorry, if we look at lead two, is there any ST elevation? The answer is no. Now, I have kind of a rule. You'll notice that the ST segment here is kind of slurred. And uh, some might look at this and think, hmm, is that elevated? Well, uh, my little rule is a squint factor. If you have to squint to see it, it doesn't exist, so I wouldn't worry about it. Is there ST elevation in lead three? No. ST elevation in AVF? No. There's no ST elevation there. Now we look at the um, anterior septal leads. Is there any ST elevation in V1? No. What about V2? Yes. Here's the baseline. Here's the J point. V3? Here's the baseline, and here's the J point right up at the R wave. Uh, V4, here's the baseline, and the J point's actually elevated above the R wave. V5, uh, well, let's just stick with uh, the anterior leads first. So without a doubt, we have uh, an anterior wall MI so far. Um, we can't say anterior septal but because we don't see ST elevation in V1. We only see it in V2, so we definitely have an anterior wall. Now let's look at the lateral leads. We have um, ST elevation in V5. We have ST elevation in V6. And since we have it in these two leads, we'll look at the high lateral leads, which is 1 and AVL. And there's ST elevation in 1. And uh, there's ST elevation in AVL, which is very subtle. Interesting because if... if if you were to look at 1 and AVL in isolation, you might look at these complexes and think, what the heck is that? Uh, but when you see it in combination with the elevation of V5, V6, you know that you're dealing with a lateral wall infarct. So because we have um, ST elevation in uh, V1, V sorry, V2 rather, right through V6, plus uh, 1 and AVL, this is uh, an antero lateral wall MI. And if you want to know if this is an extensive MI, all we have to do is uh, calculate the combined ST segment elevation. And you'll recall that an extensive MI in the precordial leads would be a combination of uh, 12 millimeters or more. So here we have probably 4 millimeters. Here we have uh, 9. Uh, that already, already meets the criteria. Here we have um, about another 9 here. So, so just V3 and V4 alone would suggest an extensive myocardial infarct. And when you're dealing with an anterior lateral wall MI, that means that the patient has occluded their left main coronary artery. That's very high up, very proximal. That means this patient has a massive MI, and it wouldn't be at all surprising if this patient was hemodynamically unstable and in uh, full uh, pulmonary edema or fulminating pulmonary edema because this is quite an extensive MI. And if you encountered a patient who had criteria like this but they weren't in pulmonary edema, they weren't hypotensive, guaranteed, uh, almost guaranteed, uh, that's the path they're headed for.